Hi, I'm Noah, and I'm building another AR headset. I built one a while ago, but that was more of a test, and it was plagued with issues. If you haven't yet seen that hot mess, go check it out after this video. Anyways, I'm hoping to make many improvements this time, and test the new form factor, so that version 3 will be even better. Yep, that's right, we're only 7 seconds into the video, and I'm already making excuses to why this is not a perfect final version. <laughs> So before the intro, I mentioned this is not going to be a magically perfect version of the original V1 headset, and that's for a couple reasons. First of all, I still have no idea what the hell I'm doing. I've got a general idea on how these things work, and a general idea on the mechanics of virtual images and so on, but there's not much in the way of a commercially viable option that I can take inspiration from and learn from. So much of the nitty gritty of this sort of design is going to be up to me to figure out. Secondly, I'm going to be reusing the code and much of the circuitry from the V1 headset. I decided this was primarily going to be a physical redesign, so it's going to properly attach to my head this time, and the heads-up display will be much easier to see, as well as the fact that it's going to look much, much better. Although it's being designed by an engineer, not a fashion designer, so don't get your hopes up too high. Oh, and one more thing. A while ago I read an article about a series of Canadian shopping malls using their information boards to gather facial recognition data and sell it off to the highest bidder, without the consent of their visitors. This made me quite uncomfortable, as I'd always assumed that this sort of thing only happened in faraway places, like the States. Alright, so they're, they're not that far away, but you get the point. Now you might be saying to yourself, wow, what an idiot, ranting about being uncomfortable about having his face in some corporate database while voluntarily putting videos of himself online for the entire world to see, and, uh, you're right. It just feels different somehow. I guess because I consented to putting these videos online. Anyways, that was a bit of a tangent. What I'm trying to say is, this thing will obscure my face a bit more so that I'll feel less creeped out when visiting the mall. So let's get to the build. I cut some acrylic for the face of the mask. Somehow I managed to cut myself with the acrylic, but not the knife. Anyways, I guess there's DNA evidence I use this cardboard now. I then bent the acrylic using a heat gun. It was pretty difficult at first, but it got pretty easy once I got used to it. I then 3D printed a frame and a rounded mount for the acrylic, which I stuck on using JB Weld. I then attached the main frame of the mask using hot glue. I tried using model cement, but the mount had bent with the acrylic a little bit, so I needed glue that would fill the gaps. Now that the frame was done, I transferred all the electronics from the old headset and added some neopixel rings to humanize the mask from the outside. I needed the earthlings, I mean fellow people, to know I come in peace. That all came together to look like this. I'm still using an Arduino Nano as the brain, and the AR module is the black box on top here. It's the same as from the previous mask, but printed in black. It contains an OLED screen and a couple Fresnel lenses to project a virtual image about 20 centimeters from my face. So it's all starting to work out now. I attached this mirror film and trimmed it to the right shape. I then sewed on this elasticated strap with the help of my girlfriend. And here's the final product. The first thing you'll probably notice is these big glowing eyes. I really think they help make the whole thing look friendly and happy looking. Which is what I'm going for. This isn't a bank robbery mask, it's a... Uh... Come to think of it, I don't think this mask has a specific purpose. Anyways, from the front here you can see this mirror film. This helps to make the eyes more mysterious obscure the wearer's face, and darken the interior, so the HUD displays better. It also hides my crimes. Not, not in the hides my face sort of way, but like it hides my bad gluing. There's also all these exposed electronics on top. I decided to leave these exposed because I actually sort of liked the look, almost like robotic hair. Although I've since realized that the top mounted electronics are going to be very susceptible to rain. On top you can see the Arduino Nano, the AR module, the Bluetooth module, and real-time clock. This circuitry makes the whole thing work and ensures that the HUD, well, displays stuff. And if I turn this bad boy around, you can see what it looks like inside. Yeah, it has some blind spots, however I tried to cut out windows in the CAD model, so the peripheral vision is somewhat existent. It's far from perfect, but it's possible to see out of the sides, here and the bottom, sorta. Although a fairly significant consequence is these giant glowing rings that are kinda a little bit just sorta smack dab in the middle of my vision. I thought it would be kinda like glasses where they're there but you sorta don't really notice them and they're kinda out of view. 
but I think that one's a little far away and too, I don't know, glowing for that concept to work. A little bit of an oversight on my part. And that's a little nauseating, I must admit, but it's not too bad, and if you don't focus on it, it's actually ignorable, which is kind of weird. A slightly bigger issue, though, is I can see a faint ghost of my own face reflected in the mirrored coating. And that's creepy. Perhaps there's a more one-way solution for next time. So you're no doubt wondering how the whole heads-up display thing worked out. And it is the same as the HUD from the last headset, although I didn't really show you last time. So here is the HUD. As you'll probably notice, I put some of the mirror film on the reflector and it made it that much easier to see. It shows the current time, although I haven't yet set the time, so it just shows the time since the headset was activated. And underneath that, it shows the temperature. The reason it's kind of pushed over to the side is due to eye adjustment. I did not know that having a top mounted AR module would mean not being able to see the sides of the screen. So to compensate for this, I offsetted the HUD placement on the screen depending on the wearer's eyes. Also, this is meant to show notifications. However, I have not gotten Notuduino to work this time. I don't know if it's just the latest Android update or the result of me using a Galaxy S20, not S7, or some other random thing, but it just refuses to work this time no matter how hard I try. Not that it really worked that well before, but it at least sort of did its track then. So anyways, if anyone has any suggestions on how to make Notuduino less awful, or maybe an alternative app that I can use to send Android notifications to my Arduino, please leave a comment below. I would love to know of one. For now though, I'm just gonna have to live without seeing my notifications on my heads up display, at least until I figure out a solution. So that's the headset. Before I review my really reliable and reputable headset, I gotta give it a test first. Roll the montage. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, it looks a little weird being out in public with it, but the upside is no one will see my face to know it's me wearing the mask. They might see this video, might they? Anyways, I had fun, and it felt super futuristic, almost like a costume, kind of like a really lame version of Wrench from Watch Dogs 2. But that doesn't mean the V2 headset is without its issues. I think that making the headset protrude less would be a big improvement next time, both for vision and for style. But the main thing I would change next time is the electronics. I really love the DIY-ness of what I have currently, but I think that if this is going to be useful at all, it kind of needs to run Android. Or at the very least, I want it to mirror my phone screen. So that's the plan for V3. I sort of knew this coming into V2, but it's going to be expensive, so I decided to save it for the next version. If you want to see the V3 headset when I finally get around to making it, maybe subscribe to my channel. Heck, kidnap your friends and make them subscribe under threats so you hit them with a wet noodle. It really helps. In the meantime, maybe check out one of my other videos, which will be linked on screen now. There's a COVID gun one, that was pretty cool, or maybe the robotic arms more your taste. Anyways, have a great day and thanks so much for watching. Bye now.